I've been studying the Eros complex, and it isn't the most delightful aspect of love to talk about. Uh, we enjoyed very much Earth's greatest and biggest secret, uh, which, which is love. It's that which binds, the, it's the cement that binds society together. You couldn't, you couldn't have a society without love. It would be an impossibility. You know, we have to have love. And then we began to teach about the agape principle, which is God himself. God is love. And then we went into the filio lifestyle, which has to do with the human aspect of human, human love and human affection that, that belongs to us as human persons. And, and uh, we have some other chapters coming up that's going to be very exciting, and we're, 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 we're going to be uh, glad to get into them. The next one after Eros is the amazing response to love, and that is going to be very great. Uh, we are beginning on page 39, Love Gone, gone Astray. Uh, we have heard of Cleopatra, uh, an amazing person. Uh, she was Greek by blood. She was born in Alexandria, Egypt, and discovered her womanness very early in her life, and learned how to conquer men very early in her life until she conquered the world's greatest, when there was no longer men of her, of her desire in Africa, she moved in on the Roman Empire in Italy, and there Caesar became her paramoi. And, and then after Caesar died, uh, then she took on Antony as, a, as her lover. He committed suicide, and she took an asp, uh, a poisonous serpent, put it to her breast, and let it bite her, and she died at 39. You, you, the, the wages of sin is always death. They, they've always been death. They hadn't just started to be death. And some of the greatest lovers that you have heard of in history died ignominious lie, uh, deaths. They did not die happy. And, and uh, we believe that when you break the laws of God, you pay for it. And, and we can't seem to get it across from generation to generation, you know. One generation finds it out and the next generation seems to not know anything about it. And your point number eight, it says the poor and the rich, the educated and the uneducated, all reach out for love. All you have to do is to be a human person and you reach out for intelligent love and it doesn't matter your status in life. Uh, today, in our society that we live in. 90% of all novels, 95% of all television programs and motion pictures are related to love and mostly to eros love and not to agape love. Never agape love. <laughs> Sometimes filial love, human, human love, but mostly eros love. Love that doesn't belong to you. Love that you're stealing, love that you're paying a price for, love that you're betraying somebody for. And, and that type of thing, uh, beginning in the Garden of Eden until this moment, it, it, it has its paydays, and its paydays are terrible. We read some words by who, who has been called the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon. He was for sure the wisest king that Israel ever had. And he wrote a book that he called Proverbs. Uh, which were uh, sayings that were put together uh, that flowed out of his mouth as he would be talking to people. In Proverbs chapter 7, it says, Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Now, he is contrasting here that if you're wise, if, if, you, if you are wise, you will, you, will, you, will not, you will not go into a strange woman. A young man will not go into a harlot if he's wise. Now, the amazing thing to me is this was written 1,000 years before Jesus. It just wasn't written last week or 10 years ago. But 1,000 years before Jesus, he's, he said, keep yourself from a strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Imagine them knowing that a thousand years before Jesus. 
Are you here? That a whore flattereth and says a lot of baloney, poison baloney. Verse 21 says, and with her much fair speech, with her much fair speech, she causeth him to yield. She causeth him to yield through her much fair speech. And with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. The flattering of her lips, she forced him. Harlots have never changed. Harlots are harlots. They've been in the same business from the beginning of time, and they use the same methods. They haven't even improved on their methods from a thousand years before Jesus was born. Can you imagine that? So sin is not a new thing. Adultery is not a new thing. And playing with eros love is not a new thing. And, and if you think you're going to get by in a certain way and, a, and different from others, you're going to end up on the same rubbish heap. You've got to end up on the same rubbish heap. There's no other place waiting for you but a rubbish heap, a moral rubbish heap, a spiritual rubbish heap. Can you say amen? In verse 22, it says, He that goeth after her straightway, you know, just goes right after a, 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 a harlot, as an ox goeth, to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. So if you're going to play with harlotry, and, and you're going to mess around with strange women that you've no business messing around with, he says, then you are like an ox, uh, walking straight toward slaughter and don't know it. He, he thinks there's food over there, and there's only death. And then God says, or as a fool walks to the correction of the stocks. Uh, that would be, there's a fool walking straight into the city jail. Uh, and so God wants us to be wise, but we cannot be wise without teachers. Amen. We've got to have men and women and fathers and mothers who teach children and to teach young people that the wages of sin is death. And as I've told you a number of times, I ask God why, why it was that, that, that that there was such an awful consequence to committing adultery. That when people steal, we forgive them, and, 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 and when they lie, we forgive them. When they commit adultery, we don't forgive them. And, and why it was. And the Lord said, for the simple reason I put it inside of you, that there's immortality there. And you just don't play with immortality. When a man and a woman come together, then their, their seed creates an immortal person that can never die, has to go to heaven or hell. And God said, that is so important that if you misuse it, then I have to judge you for it. Verse 23 says that not only to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, that means he's killed, as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. You see, hearken now unto me, you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart decline to her ways, the ways of sin, the ways of adultery. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded, many wounded. Think in our society today, you see pieces in the newspaper where, where a woman deliberately gave aids to, to men who came to commit adultery with her and paid her a price because she was a harlot and deliberately gave aids to these people so that they would die. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. Now, if you don't believe it, just go to what we call a whore house, and that's what you'll find out. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So within the heart of the harlot is what we call eros, love. Love gone bad, love love gone terrible. It's not the pure, undefiled care that God has for those people. There are no feelings of affection like agape has, but there are deceivings and lyings, and abortions and desertions, and finally, death. Point number nine says, love is like a great river. As it sweeps through the land, a river brings life to the field and flowers. When controlled by hydroelectric plants, the river brings power and light into the homes of the people. 
That same river can rampage. Same river. It can overflow its banks. It can inundate entire towns and, and cities and leave behind it death and destruction. And that's the same way it is with sex. That when it, when, when it runs in the right stream, it is so beautiful, so lovely, so godlike. But if it runs out of its borders, then it has nothing but death and sorrow related to it. In your point number 10, the devil hates pure love. He hates it. You say, why? Because God is love. And anything that's pure he hates because he is impure. Everything that's positive in God is negative in him, and so he hates it. Because God is love, agape and filio love, then the devil makes caricatures of it. He makes sport of it, makes fun of it. He says, that's not the way to live. That's not the way to have fun. He cheapens love because he hates true love. The devil mocks the youth uh, when, when, when that youth is pure and says, oh, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. Nobody's got your cherries yet. You, you just don't amount to anything. And, 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 then, and then when you're dirty as a dog, then he says, look how dirty you are. The same old devil does it. He is the accuser. It, it, the, the devil never loves anybody. You can serve him to the best of your ability and he still stomps on you and chomps on you. The devil has no love for it because he doesn't have any love. He can't give something he doesn't have and so he doesn't have any. He doesn't care. He doesn't care for those that, that serve him. The devil seeks to destroy the home where Christ is Lord of the house and the devil go, gives birth to deviant sex. All deviant sex is of the devil not of God, and not even of the human. But the devil has planted that stuff in there. And, and I want you to know, you may have to clean up your act. Oral sex is wrong. Oral sex is wrong. God didn't make your mouth to go down there. You hear me? And if a husband comes in roaring away for it, tell him, so let's have a little prayer here by the side of the bed first. Boy, you'll cool him down about 40 degrees. It is wrong, and it is not necessary, and, and, and God doesn't want you to have it. And from that, it can lead to other abominations in the sight of God. God wants us to be clean and pure in our sex life as much as he does in any other parts of our life. If you believe it, say amen. amen. In your point number 11 here, the test of true love or false love. The great apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, Now, I want to tell you what love is, he says. Love is that ability and that thing on the inside of you that can suffer for a long time. You, 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 you hear people say, you know, I, I, I've, I've, got a, I've, I've got a short uh, huh? fuse. Yeah, I've got a short fuse here. Well, God can lengthen your fuse, buddy. Are you here? God can lengthen your fuse. You don't have to go off so quick. I got a short fuse. A, a love is that ability to suffer long. And, in, and, and it's not easy. Nobody said love was easy. But God is love. And, and during Hitler's time, I was traveling all over the world, and I had 10,000 people who why don't God kill Hitler? And all I'd say is because he's not like you from what you're saying. God's not like you. God don't want anybody to go to hell. He wants everybody to go to heaven. Amen. And you can live wrong and live for quite a while. God doesn't kill you for it. He just lets you go your own way. And God doesn't send you to hell. You send yourself to hell. God has never sent anybody to hell. They send themselves to hell, and God does not have a, a part in it. It's your absence of God, and you're living the wrong life that does such a thing to you. Love is that ability that suffers for a long time, and love is kind. Now, now we seek all kinds of definitions. What is love? He says here, if you want to know what it is, it's that innate thing within you that has the ability to keep on suffering. If someone hurts you, you just, you don't fall out, you don't quit, you don't run away, you just stay in there. And, and that's not weakness. That's the greatest strength that there is. And it's, it is kind. And says love is that ability not to envy. Not to envy. You, you could take that so many directions. 
you could take it in automobiles. Are you pleased with the car you have? Or everybody you passed, you wish you, <laughs> you could trade cars and you, you'd like their car. Are you here? Or every time you pass a house, I wish I had that house. Uh, I, yeah, I don't want, no, I'll take that house. Well, how about the one you got? Won't you paint it? <laughs> Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. It doesn't promote itself. When you see a person pushing themselves, pushing themselves, it is not love, it's carnality. He's trying to show you here some definitions uh, that that thing within us that's called God, that thing within us called God, that thing can suffer long, it can be kind, it can envy not, and it does not promote itself and push itself up. It is not puffed up, it is not puffed up, uh, which, which, which means exalted, within itself, you know, I am a big shot, I am big, I am, you know, I am something. You, you, you might say, but I am bigger than others. Well, in God's sight, you may not be as big as others. You better say, hey, God, what do you think of me? And it might make altogether a different. You may be measuring your pocketbook, and God might be measuring the way you treat your wife. Yeah. Some things go over like lead balloons around here. And <laughs> verse 5, he says, now, if you wish to know what the true test of love is that it does not behave itself unseemly. Love fits in, you know, love fits in. You know, th th there's some people that, three people can be standing there and they walk up and say the wrong thing in the first word they say. And all of them look at each other and say, well, whoever invited this one in here, good Lord help us. Are you here? So, some people just are, are misfits. And they, and they go around and blame it on education and they blame it on, on, um, on environment. And it's not, it's on the inside of you. You, you have to learn to flow with people. I, I used to take people out to China. And, and as soon as they sit down to a big table of food, they'd say, are we eating worms? You want to kick them out of the table and say, you idiot, I wish you stayed home. When you were at another person's table, you ought to be nice. If I'm in India or if I'm in Africa, or if I'm in South America, and they set me down to food, I don't start saying, now, what's this? What's that? <laughs> Normally, they put something on my plate, and I eat it, and I say, hey, that's good. Glory be to God. I'm going to tell Gabriel about this, and I get to heaven. This good food. Are you here? Pure love, pure love, will not be unseemly and insult people and hurt people. Pure love cares for people and cares for their feelings. Cares for their feelings. Some people are so full of snide remarks until they're snidey. That's not a word, but it ought to be. <laughs> you don't have to say things that just ruffles other people. You don't have to say things that just make other people feel uncomfortable. Love won't do that. And so when you do it, you are not functioning in love. Love does not seek its own. Now, now that knocks most of the world out of it, doesn't it? Love does not seek its own. Love wants to help others and bless others. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. And, and, and so we, uh, we, we find that some of the things that, that God said about love. Now, now those those came to us out of the New Testament, then we can go back to the Old Testament in Proverbs 6, where it says, My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon your heart, and, and tie them about your neck. When you go out, it shall lead you, and when you sleepeth, it shall keep you, and when you awakest, it shall talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are in the way. And so we're told here how we should live our lives. The test of true love is when we live the right kind of life, obey those that, that, are, that, are, that are further along the life than we are, that understand more about living. It's, it is amazing, it is amazing how a young person needs instruction from an older person that's been down the same road. That's been down the same road. But we, we, we just don't like to listen to people that have been down the same road. I am. We, we, we could have testimonies here, and there'd be a lot of people say, don't go down the road I went, don't go down the road I went, don't go down the road I went. But these, these kids are not going to do it. They're going to go down their own road. They're going to have to learn for themselves what is bitter. 
and, and what is hurtful. And all we can do is just say, Lord, help them. Can you say amen? The agape love listens to parents and walks in the law of light. That agape love will do that. And eros love will walk its own way. It will not obey. It will not say, I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that. It just says, no, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to do as I please. Uh, you, you've heard someone in this country uh, for several years says, I want to be me. I want to be me. I want to be me. And now me's in bad shape now, you see. It, it, what we should say, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. If you'll be like Jesus, the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. It does not grow dimmer and dimmer and duller and duller. If, if my life now was worse off than it was 10 years ago, I'd start checking and say, what have you been doing the last 10 years? What, is your, what have you been doing the last 10 years? My life is at a peak right now. You see? You say, why? Because I demanded it so. And it's got more peaks out there. And they're all upstairs, up higher. And if you say, well, when you get a certain age, you start going down. Well, you're the one that pushed yourself down. You, you read back through history and you find people that, that excelled when they were in there after years and, and, and later years. They wouldn't give in to say, well, just because I'm 65, I'm just going to get out of all of it. I'm just going to retire into the background. I don't find that in the Bible. I, and I tell you what I do find, but not in the Bible. I find in older cultures, like for example in China, and, and, in, and in some places in, in Europe, that the older people are so respected for what they know that the younger people won't even let them out of their own house. They just stay right close together. And then they have the, then they have the wisdom of those that have been the way before and the energy of those that have come now. Man, when you've got energy and wisdom, you've got it made. It's, it's when you have energy by itself and no wisdom, or you have wisdom and no energy. You know, wisdom in a rocking chair don't go very far. You have to get it out of the rocking chair. How many are going to pray for Brother Summer all to stay out of a rocking chair? I thought you might. All right. All right. This is on page 41. Eros love is described in Proverbs 6 and 12. A naughty person... A wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. Now that's altogether different from what we were reading in the New Testament about what love truly is. Eros is this person here, naughty, just dirty, just plain dirty. And then it's a wicked person doing things that are bad and walketh with a froward mouth, boasting and lying as it goes. Uh, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. There are emotions that the bad people have that you don't know anything about, thank God, and you should never know anything about. They, they wink with their eyes and they speak with their feet and they, and they teach with their fingers, but you don't need to learn that junk. It's better to know what Jesus says and what the Bible says. It says, forwardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. How many believe the Bible? His calamity cometh suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without a remedy. Now that is so sad. Suddenly shall he be broken without a remedy. He has no hope whatsoever. And one of the biggest things that I wish to say in this whole series is next. I've been waiting for it. And, and listen to it. The wise man cries aloud. In Proverbs 6, 32, Whosoever committeth adultery with a woman, he lacks understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and a dishonor shall he get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. Now that last line there, you better remember it. I've remembered it all my life. It's one of the standbys for me. That if you, if you, the wise man is telling us that if you do these things, it will not be wiped away. You say, will not, will not God forgive me? Yes, God will forgive you, but your reproach is still there. You can ride a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour, wrap it around a telephone post a couple of times, and, and the surgeon can, 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 can sew you back together, but you'll always, you'll always, you will always have those scars. 
and sin has scars. God can forgive and God can sew you up, uh, but the scars of sin are still there. It's better to live for God and it's better to serve God. And wherever you are right now in life, from this moment, it's better to serve God. The final blow is, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. I, I, want, I want no reproaches over my life. I just don't want it. I just want to live a good life and go to heaven. How about you?